Welcome to Creative Things by Miss Rhonda. How is everyone doing today? Today is going to be a good day. I've been going through some things. My truck broke down and need another transmission. But you know what? I know God is good and it's all going to work out. So, of course, being stressed out, this is my favorite place to be in my craft room. So, I came in. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. And also, I would like to thank my new viewers who have never seen me before. If you're here today, welcome to Creative Things. Um, I'm coming on today because I'm working on a new project. I'm doing a tray, a Spider-Man tray for my grandson for his birthday. I've never tried this before. This is something new. It's dealing with epoxy, which is called resin. And I've painted it, which I did. I did a primer on top. It's just a simple tray from the Dollar Tree. I did a primer on it first. And then I painted it Spider-Man colors. Um, and then I just did some sticker paper characters. And I put his name on it. So I painted it with acrylic paint. Uh, blue and red. I find out if you put a primer on top of it, like this right here, which I got from Walmart um, for like $3.96. If you spray it with this primer first, it makes the acrylic paint go better. Now, of course, you can use spray paint as well because I think the next one that I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, spray paints. But um, acrylics are just fine. Long as you spray it with that primer, you should be good to go. So now I'm in the middle of getting ready to mix my resin together, which is um, the resin and then the hardener, which goes in. Both of these come inside the um, box and instructions come with it. So you guys keep your fingers crossed. I hope everything turns out well. When I get ready to pour the epoxy, I'll come back and show you what's going on. I'm also working on another reef that I'm doing. And I just covered the foam, the green foam that I've talked about so many times. It's green. It's a foam piece. And I've covered it with burlap ribbon. And then because my favorite color is yellow... I'm starting to use yellow carnations to put around the reef. And once I'm finished, I think I'm going to put some wording in the middle. So stay tuned for both of these projects. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, that you're staying safe, and that everything is going fine. Oh, yes, let me mention that when you're using epoxy, you must have on a mask because it does um have a have a tendency to smell and you also need your rubber gloves okay um this is a disclaimer i want you to be safe so make sure you have your rubber gloves some type of mask and some good ventilation if you're in a room just have a fan or something blowing so that the smell will not and cap you and um you won't get sick or anything um i'm not saying that it will get you sick i've never worked with this but one time before and i did just fine so i'm just saying to you be protective protect yourself protect your body when you're working with any chemical not just epoxy but any chemical make sure that you're protected okay you guys so now that i have given you the safety tip I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm going to mix this epoxy and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do our pour. Okay, I've decided that you guys might as well see me make uh, mistakes. A good crafter always shows their mistakes and then recovers from them. So you're going to, I'm using these medicine cups to mix. And each one has... Uh, 30 cc's on it. So it's one part resin, one part resin to one part of the hardener. So I'm going to pour. And you have to do the exact measurements. You cannot go over. You have to be exact because it will mess up if you have more hardener than you have resin 
or more resin than you have hardness. So I'm going to fill it all the way up to the 30 cap. Boom. That's it. Right there. And then one part hardener. All the way up to the 30. Let me make sure I got it around here so I can see it. All the way up to the 30. All right. Now that I'm about to stir it, I need to put my mask on because that's when it all comes alive. So make sure that you put on your mask. And now you need to stir. I have a different cup because what you're going to do is you're going to pour both of these into the same cup. So first you just need to stir a little bit around one. Okay, this is the resin. You want to pour that in first, and you want to get all of it as much as you can out of the medicine cup. And the reason why I bought these medicine cups, and I bought them in 50s on Amazon, is because you're just going to throw them away. You're not going to wash anything or whatever. You're just going to throw it away. So, and you don't use the same thing. I have seen people use the same stick because they're saying, well, if you're going to mix it, why not just use the same stick? Okay, and I have a silicone cup. That way it will clean up easier. So now that I have done this, you're going to stir. And you're going to stir it until it's clear. Okay, so let's get to stirring and you're going to scrape around the edges and silicone is better because it doesn't stick. And you can wipe it out and then you can wash it out. So you want to stir. You don't want it to be yellow. You want it to turn clear. Okay, so you're going to stir for about two, three minutes. Let's keep stirring. And you might see some bubbles forming up. Okay. And this needs to cure overnight. It's not no two, three hour dryness to this. No, it's not. You need to let this sit overnight. And it's supposed to be between 70 degrees. But what I may do and see what happens, since today is a nice day, I might just sit it on the porch. So you want to make sure this is well mixed. And according to the instructions, you're going to just mix it for another minute or so, for a minute or so, just mix it. So, And you're going to see that bubbles are forming in the inside. So what I'm going to do for that is, and I'm just going to scrape off my spoon so that I make sure that... I have all my product, and I'm going to hold on to this because I'm going to need it, and I'm just going to lay that in the tray. Is This is my heat gun, and it brings heat, and I use it for embossing my cards, but it's good for bubbles. So you're going to hold it about six inches from the resin, and you're going to get the bubbles out. You're going to pop all your bubbles because you don't want the bubbles showing in your uh, in your pour. You don't want the bubbles in your pour. So I've gotten out most of them. I'm not going to worry about the little teeny ones. And so what I'm going to do now, I have all my gloves, right? I'm going to do my edges of my tray first. Because if I do the edges, I'll know 
that this paint is sealed. They said put it on a piece of paper, but because I have my little mat here that I can wipe off, I didn't put paper. But you might want to put some paper down underneath of it if that's going, if that's okay for you. I have my little mat here that I paint on and do everything else on, so I'm not going to even, um, I don't have to put another piece of paper down here. But what's happening is you're going to see that I'm, covering my edges and I'm letting it drip down into the tray. So you're just going to go around, make sure all your edges are covered up. Make sure there's no pockets. You can't see any air pockets like I'm seeing right here. You want to go around And you want to make sure that the resin is dropping down into the tray. And yes, this is my first time trying this. I have seen some trays done, but they're not my style. Like, they're not appropriate. People are using them for other things. And I wanted to make my grandson something special. So, because his birthday was in April, and because of this coronavirus, I was unable to go see him. So, I wanted to do him something special. So, now you're going to take and pour the rest of it down in this corner here. And I have a brush, but I can't find it. So today I'm going to just use my finger. I seen it the other day, but what I did with it, I don't know. I try to put everything back in its proper place, but it never works. Sometimes it just doesn't work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and lightly just go around. You just want to lightly go around it and kind of tilt it a little bit so that the resin will spread evenly over your finger is just to guide it into spots like the corners. And you just want to make sure that it's spreading evenly around. So... Just spread it with your finger. Don't be afraid to get in there. Spread it all around. Make sure you get every spot. And then if you want to take your finger and go back over the edges, you can do that. There's no problem. And so you might have some excess resin that you might want to get back into the pan so that it will dry clearly. That's fine, too. It's just taking the excess off of it. That's all it's doing. Because what I'm learning is, instead of doing a whole uh, 30 cc's of the medicine cup, it looks as though you can do half of it, like 15, especially for these small trays. So, that's a learning experience for me as well. That means I don't need to use 30 cc's, a whole cup of this resin, to do this tray. Because the more resin you put up here, the longer it's going to take to dry. But see, I'm getting smart because I'm going to put this outside today. So there you have it. It's nice and shiny. The resin has covered everything. There's no dots or marks. There's no bubbles. It looks really good. And now I'm going to set it outside.
Now I have put everything outside so that it'll dry. Um, hopefully by this evening, sometime I'm going to lift my camera up for you. It'll be uh, nice and dry. As you can see, there's a lot of resin left in this cup. I could have done two trays. So, like I said, this is my second time using this. Um, so I'm learning with my friends. You take one glove off, put it in your hand like this, and take the other one off. And you cannot keep this because it hardens. So you just pour it inside of your glove. Just pour it inside the glove. I have some wax paper here. And my room is well ventilated because I have on, um, I have a ceiling fan. So I turn that on when I'm working. With it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to put this glove in here. All of these sticks that I work with, I'm going to ball it up. And then I'm going to dispose of it in the trash can. I always keep my handy wet ones, which is, I'm running out, so it's probably going to be hard to get some now with the times, but I can just wipe this up. This comes right off the thing, right up, and I'll put that inside here as well. Yep, this wipes right up, and then I'll dry it with a paper towel. The best time to clean up this is when it is wet. Because once it hardens, you're going to have a time trying to get this stuff off. I'm going to kind of wipe this out a little bit, but I'm going to take this into the kitchen so that it can be cleaned out fully. Okay, I've cleaned up <laughs> that project because that's like one of the messy ones. And now I'm going to work on this one. This is going to be a wreath for my front door. And I've got my mom. She had the ice cream cone. I hope you all viewed that video. I will leave that link in the description box down below. Let me get my camera fixed so you can see um, exactly what I'm doing. I, the ice cream cone I made, I'll leave that description uh, link down. And I'll leave that link, sorry, down in the description box. So all this is, is very, very simple. It's just picking you some nice flowers and just going around the wreath with it. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting off a little bit because this is styrofoam, you don't have to glue it. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking my little piercer, which has a sharp point on it, and I'm putting a hole, and then I'm sticking my flower in it. There we go. So what I'll do to save time is I'll just cut these off. And these are carnations, and of course, they're from my DIY, the Dollar Tree, because like I said, I'm not branching out too far, and I tried curbside at Michael's the other day, and I left the stuff there, because it's just, it's too much. It's just too much. So, um, I love Michael's. That's one of my favorite places to shop at, actually, um, and I always have a coupon for them. But it's just too much. It's too much right now. So I actually just left the stuff. I didn't even try to stay and wait for it because it's just too much. So, and some of the stuff they had, I think I went there for probably two items. And the two items that I needed, I found them in the Dollar Tree. So it wasn't worth me sitting out there for hours and hours waiting like I'm waiting on toilet paper or something. I'm No, I'm not going to do that. My patients are not that thin, are, are too thin for stuff like that. So all you're going to do after you cut all your flowers off, you're just going to take something sharp, pierce a hole, and then punch your flower through. And like I said, this is styrofoam, so it's going to go right through. And if you're not um, comfortable with it, and you think it might fall out, put some glue on it. Put Use your hot glue gun and then put uh, glue on the end of the stem. I'm going to cut this stem. I'm just cutting them 
so they'll try to fit. And so if you wanted to make sure that they stick and you're not really sure, just put a little glue on it like that and then just stick it through the hole. Same concept. It's just that you have glue on it now. So same, 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 same concept. But this styrofoam will hold it. So it's probably no need to stress yourself about it. So you just go around. And I have this wording here. Blessings. And I was going to change the color, but I think I'm not. I'm just going to see. And I'm going to move this because I want it to go right here in the middle. So because I want it to go right here in the middle, then I'll probably just put some glue on that so I'll know where my flowers begin and where they end. Put some glue here. And it says blessings. Like that. And just continue around from the blessing. And see what's going to happen is I believe what I'm going to do is I will probably um, stick my hole in here like so. You can hear them going into the styrofoam. And you right about say, why she just doing yellow? It's my favorite color. So it's my favorite color. I love yellow. So that is the reason why I'm doing all yellow. Anybody that knows me, my personal friends. They know what my favorite color is. It's yellow, yellow gold, anything that is of. Uh... And so what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to put two bowls here. Because I wanted, I thought about just putting another flower here. I think that's what I'll do. See, I just trial and error. I just go, I just go with it until I think of what I want to do. I don't. It's no mapped out plan or no mapped out uh, steps. And then I think I'll just put a bow right here. That's that's what I'll do. I'll just put a bow right there. And then it's ready to hang. So let's find a nice little bow to go here. And we'll see what happens. I'll put my hanger on the back of it. Okay, so now we're going to, I decided that I was going to do a bow out of this pretty burlap with the lace. So what I did was I put a stripe of yellow down the middle. And I'm going to put a stripe of yellow. Well, it's yellow gold. And I'm just going to put a stripe of that down the middle as well. And to make it quicker, I think I'm just gonna use my glue gun. You know this glue is hot, it's gonna make it go faster. Cut it off. Then lift this up a little bit and put the other half under here. I'm just, I looked up to make sure you guys could see it. Be very careful. Like I always say on my videos, this glue gun is hot, 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 extra hot. So you don't want to get burned. And of course, me being smart, I got my two finger things on the, on the post, on my chick stand. 
into the instead of having it on my fingers. And so I'm just going to take this little piece right here, put a little glue back here, fold it over and attach it. Okay, and then I'm going to make this out of a bow, which I'm going to fold it like this, and then fold it again over, and then I'm going to smush it in the middle, and I'm going to take a piece of small burlap, like I never throw these little strings away, because they, they come in handy, and I'm just going to tie this around to secure the bow. And I call this just a simple bow. It's not a whole lot of loops. It's not a whole lot of this and that. And, and I go around it again to make sure that it's nice and secure. And I tie it again. Make it really, really tight. And make sure your knot stays on the back side. That piece just broke on me. Uh-uh. Let's try this again, everybody. I pulled too hard on this string. We're going to smush it together. And make sure you have enough where you can smush it together. Because you don't want it to be... You want to try to make the loops as even as possible. And sometimes it's hard to see um, when you're squishing it. But you want enough in the back where you don't have any problems hooking it together. And the tighter you tie it, it's going to smush for you anyway. The only thing that I've never really invested in was a bow maker. And I had a carpal tunnel years ago. And I had operations on both my hands. And sometimes I can feel the, the pressure um, in my wrists and my fingers. So I might have to eventually invest in a, like a bowl maker where it does most of the work. And I can just do the tie And I've, I've seen several... Um, because I've been looking and just thinking whether or not I should get one. But like just then I could feel that pressure in my wrist. So eventually I probably will have to wind up getting one <laughs> to help me out. And so now I'm just going to take and I'm going to glue the bow right there. And once I secure the bow... And with glue, although it's hot, you still need to give it some assistance and hold it for a few minutes, you know, so that it'll catch up with whatever you're doing. And this is a piece of string back here, so I'm going to cut that. I don't want no string strings hanging off. And you see that tip up there. And the reason why I decided to leave that is because... Once I put the bow up here, I think I'm going to re-glue this S. So I'm going to pull this S up because it is metal, so you can pull it right up. Just take your time so you won't rip anything. See, it comes right up. And you can bend it back, shape it back to how it's supposed to be. And I think I'm going to glue my bow down first, and then I'm going to glue blessings on top of that. So let's get my bow up here first. I'm trying to move my bow down some, I think. So the S can go right on top of it. I'm a, I, see, I can pull this right out till I get my bow straight. And then if I need to put that back up there, I put it back up there. And so I'm just going to put glue here. And glue on the back of the bow. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to make sure this S is on top. And 
we're just gonna hold that down hold the bow down for a few minutes And I think I'm going to take and put this, where's my little puncher? Well, I have several, so I could just use this one. Put it back in my chick stand. These chick stands are great for holding stuff. I'm telling you, like, really, really great. And I'll leave, um, I'll leave a link down at the bottom for the chick stand, too. And so I'm going to kind of, like, lay this back here so it won't cover the S completely, but it'll be back there. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this one. Make sure it stays in place. I have invested in me a glue skillet where instead of using a glue gun, you can dip it, and dip your stems into the glue. So when it gets here, I'm gonna unveil it with you all, my best viewers. And we're going to see how it works. Okay. And then I'm going to glue the S back down. Wipe off this glue gun because I don't like it all sticky. Hold that down. Kind of fluff up my bows. And this is what it looks like. It says blessings. Yay! And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to put like a little pearl or something right here in the middle. I think I'm going to take and I'm going to put a little rhinestone. This is my little rhinestone box. This is not the only little box I have. My little rhinestone suitcase. I have all colors, all types of rhinestones that I've collected over time. And I think I'm going to take and put a big yellow one right in the middle. Right here. So let's put a little glue on top of that. It's all about yellow today. I'm not doing any other color but my favorite color, yellow. And there you have it. And there is my new reef blessings. I'm gonna hang this um, on my door. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Comments down the bottom. Come on and give me some comments, guys. I don't mind it. Give me some comments. We are respectful. If you see something I could change, let me know. It's okay. Leave me some comments. Hit the little subscribe button. Hit the like button. And if you want notifications, hit the bell. Okay? So, Thank you again for joining me at Creative Things. I love you all. Be blessed and stay safe. Bye-bye.